Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Elias back with another video on our channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you GitHub Copilot. I'll show you different ways that you can utilize Visual Studio Code and a Copilot together to build an application faster. There are many different ways how you can use GitHub Copilot, like through comments, through quick chat, through the full fledged side menu. You can access GitHub Copilot in Terminal as well. So some of the options are better for certain coding, which we'll talk about in this video. First, we need to install Copilot. To be able to install the GitHub Copilot, which you can see in a side menu bar, you need to go to extensions and search for GitHub Copilot. I've already got Copilot because I've already installed it, but go ahead and install Copilot and Copilot chat extension. Once you've installed that, to open Copilot in the sidebar, click on this chat button, which you can see in the menu items. We have three options, ask, edit, and agent, which we will take a look at shortly. That's a Copilot in the side menu. You can also access Quick Chat by clicking on the Copilot icon on the top. I've got a React project and I will open this root.tsx files. If you right click, you can go to Copilot and click on Editor Inline Chat, which will open Inline Chat, which will only reference to the selection that you have. This way you can only ask Copilot to do certain things on your selection. You can also utilize Copilot by typing comments. Depending on a comment, it will try to write a code for you. For example, here it says create a link to the Favicon. When I click on next line, it gives me a suggestion which I can apply by pressing tab. You can use a quick chat in GitHub Copilot by clicking on that icon and clicking on quick chat. It will open that menu and you can start typing some questions to the Copilot. To add a context, you can add a lot of other options which we'll talk about shortly. I'm gonna ask a question, how can I run the weed project? Well, it is gonna give me an answer, but the thing is, it is also taking a root line one to 39 as a context, but it's still trying to process what I ask. So it'll give me install your dependencies and use PNP dev, as it knows we're using PNP as a package manager. So if I type PNP dev, it will start the application on localhost 3000. You can click on this button to insert that into terminal insert add cursor or copy this command. I will click on this insert in terminal. As you can see, it opened the terminal and inserted that command for me. After running PNP dev, I can see the application is running on localhost 5173. I'll go to localhost 5173, which will open our project. So here's a React router based React application. I find the best use case for quick chat is by asking a question to explain the code. So in a quick chat, I can go into, you know, route and select a line, which in this case, line number three, and I can press forward slash and select these options like explain. And I'll type explain and press enter. And you'll see it will read the code, which is selected on routes.ts file line number three. And now it's trying to explain what this code does. An explanation is okay, but you just gotta make sure that you verify that information from the official documentation as well, because maybe the project has changed, but the documentation in VS Code hasn't been updated. So it's not trained to the latest data. You can use the fetch command right there to get the latest. In my experience, the quick chat of a Copilot is very useful when it comes to asking questions regarding your code, select it and use the explain and you get the answer. You can also do other chat within this quick chat window, maybe some information about the framework. Now, to be able to write code, I think the most common way is writing comments in the code. In this case, I'm writing create a new component which shows a link to the YouTube channel. Now, once I press enter, you see the next line in the commenter, it created a YouTube link component and I'm keep pressing tab 
tab to accept the changes written by Copilot. Once done, I will go ahead and uncomment the code. After the component is created, I'll go to this Vulkan.tsx component and you can see Copilot is already know that I created this component and it actually imported and also utilized that. Now here on the website, you can see the YouTube channel and if I click on it, it will open the new tab with the YouTube and the channel doesn't exist by the way. Let's just say you have an error in the code or in this case, I have the error with the import. I press command dot, it will give me the drop down, which I will say fix via copilot. You can also do an explain via copilot, which will try to fix it using an AI, which is GitHub Copilot. You can also hover on the arrow, it will give you this model and you can select fix using Copilot as well. And it'll give you some suggestion and it will generate a fix for you as well. Let's move to the side menu and here is everything that Copilot can do. We have three options like ask, edit, and agent mode, which was recently introduced in GitHub Copilot. Well, to be able to ask question, just like a quick chat, you can use ask mode and you can also specify these options as well. So if you want to talk about workspace or create new workspace or get explanation, you can select these options and all of these options are self-explanatory. We can also click on this mic icon and install this extension. If you want to use, you know, voice to type instead of typing, a lot of people use it, but in my experience, when I try to speak, it just cuts off very quickly. So I find it rarely to talk to the mic to be able to write my queries. You can click on add context, which means you can add specific file to your question. You can click on add context. You can either choose the code base as well. In this case, I'm adding this welcome and homepage. Now asking question we already seen in a quick chat, but let's go to edit mode and I'm going to ask some questions here. And basically the edit mode is that you can type what you want to edit or add or implement or refactor. Then Copilot will take the context, what you're given in terms of files, and it will try to modify your code. And once the command is finished, we'll press enter and you will see what the Copilot does for us. I'm asking Copilot to remove the boilerplate code from React Router and we can use the Copilot edit to create an application top bar. And I want it to be sticky and I want a logo on the left and I want a menu on the right side. Now we'll just create a portfolio website just to showcase the capabilities of Copilot. As you can see, the AI models are being trained every day. We have new models coming up and one model today is great, but tomorrow it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna have a competitor. Maybe the other model will be better than Copilot one day. But what I'm trying to do here is asking it to create a portfolio website with a header on the top. A header has a logo and a menu. And I want to make sure that, you know, I use a Tailwind CSS. So I will ask it to use Tailwind here. And we are going to ask it to use the mock data with the placeholder. Once done, I'll press enter. Now I could actually ask the question. It will not update my code base, but well, once I go to the added mode, given that I have provided the proper context, I'll give a code base context. So if it needs to read other files, it can. Now it's time for allowing the Copilot to read our prompt and apply its changes. So now it is going to look at the welcome.tsx component within this file and it is now refactoring the component and removing the boilerplate code. Now you can see it has some errors because we you know it's in the progress. Now also it, given the context we provided, it used home.tsx file and also making some edits as well. 
So the result will be very, very impressive. We haven't really asked it to create a fancy or professional looking website yet, but let's see what the result looks like. Once Copilot completes its edit, it'll give you a UI which is looking like this. You can either keep it, you can discard it, or you can toggle the diff editor which will show you the differences side by side. You can go to the next edit or previous edit by clicking on these arrows. You can also accept or reject edits by going into the edits and clicking on this tick mark or discard button or toggle a diff editor. I'll click on keep to keep all the changes on both files and click on done. Now let's save this file and we're going to go to the browser. Here you can see this is what we're getting. So it created a sidebar which is a sticky one and then the header and then the list of projects that I can you know, put some details into it. I'm going to try making this project component as a, a separate component so we can reuse it instead of having that HTML being duplicated too many times as you can see down there. So let's ask a prompt to break down the project or card and allow the props to render the data. Here's my completed um, prompt. So I'm going to ask you to break the project into reusable component and create um, a folder components. Now Copilot can create folders and files as well, which is great. So if you look at the file explorer, it created a component folder and it created a card component within it. And it's making these edits and this is just a card component. Now we're going to click on keep to keep the card, but you can also see it modify the welcome.tsx file and utilize projects. And here's an array of projects. Click on keep, keep, and then save, and then take a look at our application. And here, same application, but it's the card component is now being utilized. Given that what Copilot did already for us, if you had to do it manually, it would take uh, quite a bit of time. But you can see using the Copilot is great because we can ask it to do certain things. And we haven't even seen the agent mode yet. Now I'm going to ask you to update the card to have a project image and a link. And I would like to create a route for each of the project, which means when I click on a link, it should render just that project and we should have a go back to the project list button as well. Here's our response and Copilot is working to make that happen. Now it's going to update the component to include the project image and a clickable link. It's going to modify the card component and we haven't really given the context yet what Copilot does it, it also looks at the modified file or changed file, you can say, and it created a new project.tsx component and we click on keep and then keep as well within the card we're utilizing um, view project. And now let's go back and then it's going to keep editing this file as well to utilize the component. And you can see the array of project has been modified by including image and a link to it. And it also used use state hook to keep track of selected projects and another function to handle the project click, which will take us to the next um, index. I won't save. Now I'm going to click on project one. As you can see, we can go to the project one, project two. We also have a back to projects button and then the project three and back to the project button. Now the website is already looking great and it took us like 14 or 15 minutes to build this project. And then you can see, you can keep asking the Copilot to do certain things, which is great. It might not do everything, but as you can see, if you give it the you know prompts broken into like pieces and making it, using it as your partner, coding partner, then that would basically work. So now we're going to ask us to make the project component fancy and professional using Tailwind CSS. And let's see what it can do for us to make it fancy. 
Here is the current state of our applications. You can see the images are not loaded is because we don't have those images in our source code. Now let's go ahead and then take a look at the agent mode. Now agent mode is great because agent can also read your terminals and if you have errors in the terminals, it can actually smart enough to understand that. Let's click on done and switch to agent mode. And now I'm going to ask agent mode to download some images from Unsplash or any website. Once downloaded, I want to ask it to update the logic as well. So we'll write download mock images from Unsplash. We can also say if you don't find images in Unsplash, you can download from somewhere else and use those images in our welcome page in projects and render our code. So let's just wait for the prompt and I will run this once the prompt is complete. Well, the last thing I want to add, this should fix the errors in terminal as well. Now, agent mode is something different. Added mode can edit files but cannot work smart enough to look at if those edits made any errors. So as you can see, edit mode will do that. So we add a context to a code base and recent edited files. Now I will run the agent command. It is gonna start working on our prompt and now it's saying searched code base for mock image download. Well, if it finds it, then it will utilize that context as well. Now it's asking me to run this command in the terminal. I'll click on continue and you can see it opens the terminal, run the command. Well, it's asking me to run the command in terminal again. Now, again, there are errors once we run the command. Now, agent mode is smart enough because you're running those command in terminal. It is also reading the responses of those commands and it's telling me now, that it's not being able to download from Splash, so it will modify the command for us. This time when I run by clicking on continue, as you can see, it is downloading some sort of images from Unsplash, which might not work because we don't know the exact images. We need to go to Unsplash website and um, get all the proper links. But what it did, it, it just created these three files in images directory and it is modifying the source code to utilize those. Let's go take a look at in the file explorer, but once let's click on keep. Well, the agent is smart enough. It is still looking at a few things, so you can't click on keep at this stage. We'll go to the file explorer and you will see there's a folder called public slash images and these three files are downloaded. Well, those are wrong files because Unsplash might not have those files, so that's fine. But it did try to download, it did try to read my terminal with errors and according to the error, it modified its code. Now, to be able to start a new chat, you could go click on plus button, which I'll show you. But now you can see the project is still working. I could keep asking edit mode to build all this portfolio, but that's not the motive of this video. The motive of this video is to show you the core palette. You can also discard changes by clicking on the under button, which will bring up that dialog, which asks you, hey, do you want to discard? You click on this plus button to create a new window for GitHub core palette. Now I think we covered pretty much everything that you need to know regarding GitHub core palette, how to utilize it, in the best way so you can get some stuff done. Thanks for watching and I hope you liked this video. If you did, subscribe to the channel and give this video a like and I'll speak to you guys in the next video. Cheers.